what is going on with Cam? He just has not been impressive. Like, even if the underlying numbers are good, even if maybe he's been a little better than the average fan thinks, and I will con- count myself in that group for this conversation, uh, Even you can't make the argument, actually, he's been good. Like, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't say that, yeah. right? I, I mean, I would say that he's... To me, he's played like a top four NHL defenseman, which is what I think he is. But they certainly are expecting more from him. I think the the best argument you could probably make against the underlying numbers, because his underlying numbers are very strong. He's got a 57.42 expected goal share when he's been on the ice. So the Flyers have significantly outplayed the opposition in terms of, of chances when he's been out there. I think you can make a case, and honestly, my eye test lines up with this, you can make a case that that's mostly on Travis Sanheim. And that the Sanheim is, dri- Sanheim is driving that pair, not And York. the forwards he's often out there Fair. with as a number one defenseman. He's Fair. getting a lot of play with Cates. He's getting a lot of play with Couturier. Guess what they do? Make play go yeah. the other way. But but to me, just, Sanheim, yeah. yes. I watch Sanheim and I'm saying mm-hmm. to myself, man, he's playing well. Yes. And I watch York and it's like, he's, I don't think, aside from Saturday, Saturday he was awful. He was, he, was, he, he deserved was, the bench. Yes, he was really, really bad. But aside from Saturday, I think at five on five, he's been fine. But I certainly think he is the second wheel on that pair. Like, Travis Sanheim has been the one driving that pair. He's been driving the bus. And what you saw on Saturday was not only was Cam York not driving the bus, he was actively sabotaging the bus. He was poking (laughs) holes in all the tires of the bus. The wheels on the bus are flat because (laughs) Cam York fucking stabbed him with a knife. Yeah, And, 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 And as I said during the game, I tweeted this out, like, Look, this is what happens when you use a 22-year-old on your first pair. He's going to have games like this. You deal with it because the point of this season is develop it. And I still hold to that. However, and this is where you get into the, the Tortorella element of this. So Tortorella benched him for the third period. We obviously asked John Tortorella after the game if he was willing to explain what drove the benching. He was not. <laughs> and then we asked, essentially, what do you think caused his poor play? And... Tortorella responded, I don't know. You're going to have to ask him. I have my thoughts. You definitely are getting the sense that John Tortorella is maybe not, not maybe to the degree that he's not sold on, say, Morgan Frost. But you're getting the sense that John Tortorella is a bit frustrated with Cam York. And I think that mirrors a lot of the opinions of the fans who are watching this team and are saying to themselves, I want to see more from Cam York. I think John Tortorella wants to see a lot more from Cam York. You think, uh, are the Brian Leach comparisons finally? I mean, that, that was always ridiculous. It was ridiculous. always ridiculous and unfair. I'm just joking. Like, I think back, and I can't remember if I saw this on Twitter or maybe it was a post-game comment when we were talking about um, Cam York on Saturday, but it was a reminder of the first day of training camp and the, you know, the rope skate, the bag skate oh, yeah, that yeah. they do. And somebody said, is it York's conditioning? Someone asked, like, is it his conditioning? Because he did struggle through the bag skate. And it's just a question to me of, like, I'm not going to say he's out of shape, but is he maybe, like, we're seeing Travis Sanheim, his partner, play close to 30 minutes a game some nights. He's a horse out there. He's, yeah, Yeah. he looks like, you know, he looks like Ivan Provorov taking these minutes. He's, you know, young Ivan before we turned on him. Right. But (laughs) he looks like a Ryan Suter, like somebody who can handle these minutes. Um, Is York maybe just not built for these minutes? Is he too young? Like, does he still need to develop some more strength so he can, like, deal with the grind of 26 minutes a game? Like, do you think it's a physical limitation? You know, it, I can't really answer that completely because I just— You're not as strong Yeah, coach, like, I just yeah. don't know. To me, I mean, you ask any player, any defenseman in particular, they're always going to say they want to play more, that they can handle the minutes, that they're strong enough. That said, is it possible that York might— Because there are times where players think they're strong enough to take all the minutes, and then they get out there, and you watch them, and you say to yourself— no, you ideally don't want Cam York playing 24 minutes a night. Maybe he's better in 18 when he can use his energy in, in shorter bursts and be more effective. That's possible. To me, I don't think it's a physical thing, and I don't put a ton of stock in the bag skate because 
I know fans do, and I know that it's a moment where fans could be like, ooh, man, he didn't do that much in the summer. And sometimes that's probably the case. You know, that is part of the point of a John Tortorella bag skate is you damn well better work your ass off in the summer because if you don't, everyone's going to see that you did it. But you could easily flub, and that by flub, I don't mean, like, everybody finished the bag skate. Cam York finished it, but more like— And we pointed to that out at the time. Like, Tortorella mentioned it, yes. but kind of, like, gave him props yeah. for getting through it even though he was struggling. Exactly, exactly. And that's what he says is that the important part about it is finishing, not necessarily looking pretty while you do it. That said, like, you can flub a, a bag skate, one of those rope skates that Torres does, just by burning your energy a little bit too quick in the first part, where maybe that first rep or that second rep, you thought you had more energy than you did, and you did it a little bit faster than you should have, and suddenly you're getting muscle spasms, and you're getting cramps, and you're gassed, and then it's a serious struggle getting through. I don't think the fact that he struggled in the bag skate means that he just partied all summer and didn't do shit. I don't think that's true. I also don't think it's true because it's not like, like the Flyers have these sports science things. They are they are monitoring these guys' fitness levels far more than we can by watching them on the ice. And you would think that if York showed up legitimately out of shape, they would not have responded by putting him on the top pair with Travis Sanheim and letting him play 25 minutes a night. So I don't think that's, it's... That's a very, very fair yeah, point. To like, like, I don't yeah. think it's a, it's a conditioning thing. I do think that one of the issues with York so far is that he... I get the sense he's struggling a little bit being paired with Sanheim because Sanheim has been so aggressive and props to him. He's doing exactly what the coaches want him to do. He's carrying the puck up ice. He's leading the rush. He's in front of the net. Like yeah. he spent a lot of he spent a lot of the Kings game yeah. below the hash marks on offense. Yeah. There was a lot of time he was in front. Exactly. No, and and, and the Flyers and I love want that. that. Yeah. I mean, I want that. You want that. John Tortorella wants that. The thing is, is that only one defensive can be doing that at a, at a time. Yeah. And I think York is maybe struggling a little bit with the balance where, you know, he maybe wants to go. I know Tortorella wants him to take We've chances. We've talked how but the, they are pushing him to try to take chances yes. and how, like, maybe even the, the Emil Andre thing was, like, it's clear he's not ready. Why is he here? And it's like to point to him and go, you're better than him, but he's doing what we're asking of him, yeah. so he's here. Yeah. Do what he's doing and everything will be peachy. Yeah. And it's like, he can't get there. But I do see, I hadn't thought of like that balance thing. Like, all right, well, if you're one, like if the one dude is Bobby Orr, like he's just going to be up ice the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> like someone needs to be back. Yeah. Otherwise it's just a jailbreak. Yeah. And I think that's part of it. I also think part of it is legitimately on Cam York in that there have been times where Cam York could have been more assertive on the ice, both with the puck and without the puck in terms of trying to kill plays, in terms of bringing the puck up ice, in terms of doing literally anything on the power play. And York has been the passive guy that frustrates John Tortorella because I think that's really the underlying story here. I still believe in Cam York's talent. I think I don't necessarily think he's going to be a top pair defenseman, but I think there's a good chance he's a darn good second pair defenseman. He's only 22 years old. He's still developing. Important to remember as well. It's very important to remember. But it's also important to remember that one of John Tortorella's prescribed jobs in this rebuild, what Danny Briere and Keith Jones and the entire brain trust want him to do is to tell them who he thinks should be part of this. And I get the sense that John Tortorella gets frustrated that York isn't as assertive on the ice as he thinks he should be. 